Hello and welcome back to Franklin Covey's Be a Better Leader series. My name is Lena Rinne and I'm the Senior Vice President of Professional Services and Client Facilitation at Franklin Covey. I'm also your host for this season of conversations about what you don't know when you become a leader. Change is inevitable, and as a leader, it's your job to guide your team through the change. In this episode, we'll be talking about how to navigate change and uncertainty and how to lead your team through those even most challenging of times. To help guide us through this conversation, we are incredibly lucky to have Franklin Covey Senior Consultant and co-author of our newest book, Change, How to Turn Uncertainty into Opportunity, Marche Plachette. And Marche, you and I have had the honor of working together for over a decade, so I am thrilled that you're able to join us. Welcome to the podcast today. Thank you so much, Lena. It is absolutely exciting to be with you. And you know, you and I have, as I mentioned, worked together a long time. You've been a coach, a mentor, a friend, and we've also navigated a lot of various changes together. (laughs) And we know that change happens, that it's inevitable and that it can be disruptive. Franklin Covey has discovered that change follows a predictable pattern, a really important thing for leaders to know. So what would you start out by saying, what what do leaders need to know about that pattern so that they can help their teams work through the change? Yeah, absolutely. So I'll share with you a little bit about what the pattern is, but there is absolutely a predictable pattern that doesn't matter where the change comes from, if it, it comes from outside of the organization, inside of the organization, if it is something someone wants for themselves, there is this predictable pattern of change. And it is very helpful just to understand what is it so that it could be a little bit of a map of sorts to help orient team members of where we're trying to go and where we are now. So it's pretty simple, um, but it is understanding that there is this zone of status quo that when everything is you know fine we're lovely everything is lovely we're mastering whatever it is that we do we're in the zone of status quo but inevitably things are going to change and particularly if we're wanting to be competitive and we're wanting to make sure that quality and things are great things will change Um, and so then there is the zone of disruption and in the zone of disruption there will be a drop in um, productivity and there will be, it will take time, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I jokingly say to people, even if you were to win a car, there's still going to be a little bit of a drop, right? Mm-hmm. You got to figure out how it works, yes. you know, and so on. So if you were to win a car, I think I said that. <laughs> cool. um, but so there's this d- zone of disruption, seriously, where people must get acclimated. They've got, really, they've got to figure out what's happened to them. And why is it happening? What does that mean? And it's a whole lot that goes with that. But there is this dip and any leader wants to make sure that dip is not so deep and it doesn't take so long to get people out of it. So there's a space, there's what we call the point of decision that any leader should be trying to help their team members get to because it's when they take some ownership in how they get through the change. So it's a thoroughfare, really. It's the thoroughfare of, I'm going to try. I'm I'm in on the trying. And so that takes us to the zone of adoption. In the zone of adoption, it is a lot of trying. It's a lot of mistakes, potentially. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of frustration. Um, And it's the place, honestly, where most change actually fails. Oh, interesting. Um, Yeah, yes, because people are feeling like I tried, it didn't work, whatever it happens to be, right? And it can be very frustrating, but it's a zone of adoption. But it's also where it's we we get on the upswing. It's not so smooth as just like, all right, we're going up. But it could be very well the path to greatness and and accomplishing whatever the change is. And that takes us to the zone of innovation, which is where you've mastered whatever the change has been and you recognize that there are things that are possible that could never have been possible before that. So that's the path. And it's helpful as leaders, just for starters, for us to understand that. Absolutely. And then there's more. And, you know, you mentioned this at the beginning, but I think it's worth just underscoring that the change comes in all different shapes, sizes, causes, impacts. 
And like right now, I see a lot of leaders that are struggling with change in their industry. We've got, you know, maybe there's macroeconomic headwinds. Maybe you've got different competition. And you mentioned this, but from status quo, there is disruption that lowers results. And what I'm always um, observing and taken off guard, and I'm interested in your view on is how oftentimes leaders kind of get into flailing mode. Like they're, okay, what do we do? Like there's, there, it's almost like it's reactive. There's no thought as we go into these disruptive times of change. We just get scared. I mean, do you see the same thing? What, what, talk, talk a bit about that. Yes. So here's what's interesting. As leaders, like we're people too. Leaders are people too. <laughs> so the first thing is to get oriented ourselves. What's happening? Like oftentimes when we take the change to our people, um, it's been a bit of conversation. We've been hearing or feeling or thinking about maybe the change is coming from us, mm -hmm. right? But so then when we take it to our people, it's jarring. Yes. It can be dizzying for yes. them. So, and sometimes I think leaders realize, all right, I don't, and it, and it scares them or it's frustrating to them even because they're feeling, hey, just do it. Yes. Yes. But it's not that simple. It's people who are doing the change. Yeah. Okay. So in all of the ideas, the analysis we've done, the strategies that we have created, if the people don't buy into it and if they don't do it, it doesn't happen. Right. So we got to The people will just stop the change dead in its tracks if they don't yes. adopt it, right? Yes, absolutely. So here's, here's the key. I talked about the pattern of change that's predictable. That's really important. But what's more important is understanding that people have various reactions to change. Some people are very resistant. Some people aren't really sure and they're waiting to see what other people are doing. Some people are thinking this isn't what I signed up for. So I don't want to do it. And they absolutely leave. And some people stay and quit in yeah. place. Right? Yeah. And, you know, and then some people, honestly, there are some people who are really excited about change. But it's all of these different reactions to change. And n neither of those that I've just mentioned is in and of them themselves, neither of them um, is bad or good, right? They, they, could, they can be either, right? And as leaders, it's important for us to simply understand that people have a very visceral, a very normal human reaction to change that we've got to understand so we can't freak out. Yes. Or, you know, leaders can't freak out. It's like we've got to have some conversation and help people to understand that we appreciate them and we need them to be a part of the change and help them get as clear as they can um, about what's happening. You know, I, I giggled and I think it's just a poignant point to say people or leaders are people, too. <laughs> right? yeah. As leaders, change is also scary for us. And you know, I, I have seen leaders that when they themselves instigate the change, particularly when it's something they know will help the team, like when they're excited about the outcome, they're upgrading something, system, process, software, whatever. And then when results dip, sometimes in a very reactionary way, we're like, oh, wait, maybe that was the wrong choice or, OK, it's not working. What do we need to do differently? And it's it's that that people part of me as a leader that is like, oh, no, what happened? But I love the point that that dip is natural. That dip should be expected because our teams have to catch up with us. That's right. That's right. And it's so important for us to have conversations because it's the we want to we want to make sure that we're engaging and we are open um, to the fears, it's like they, we've got to empathize because when we first hear about or think of a change, we have our own reactions, mm -hmm. right? So we've got to be empathetic, have conversations. And we might, you just mentioned a leader and the leaders might think like, was that the right thing? Or is, well, talk to your people. Trust me, they'll tell you they'll, if we, if we're open to having those conversations, they will tell you what it's feeling like, what they're afraid of, what they don't like. It doesn't mean that we change it all, but it means that we consider um, what they're feeling. Um, and, and maybe some of their ideas can actually help us figure out how we can move forward in a more uh, productive or effective way. It sounds like communication throughout the entire process is going to be critical. Um, if we maybe start out at the beginning, what 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 best advice would you give a leader who's 
anticipating change, instigating change, reacting to change as many leaders are right now, just right at the front of that, what, what communication advice would you give a leader? What should they be thinking about? Yeah, I think they should be thinking about what's a compelling case. How do I convey this to my people in a way that does not um, just from the start, just scare them just from my communication. And I often say, and we talk about this in the book, you know, don't just, and I use the word convey just now, and it just kind of made me think about, we don't want to just convey, hey, there's going to be a change. We've got to communicate about it. So we should be thinking about how we feel about change or how we have ever felt about change. We should be thinking about what, you know, what does it mean for our team? What is it that we've been doing and what is it that we are going to be doing? What is it that we're going to need to um, move from and move towards? So, and, you know, what does it look like success ultimately? Why are we doing this? What are we hoping will be the impact of that? And thinking that through so that we really can be available um, and, and really practice like giving good information from the start because even with that, inevitably, there's going to be some things to work through. But if we don't at least do that, it's going to be all the more yes, challenge. a much steeper climb. And, and especially in that zone of disruption, zone of adoption, if you can get really clear on the why and get the buy-in, it eases some of that. But you and I both know inevitably you will have resistance. Again, back to that human nature change is hard. For leaders that are helping their teams manage t change or navigate change, what would be your best advice or strategies for that leader who have some resistant team members? Yeah. So, so one of the things is, and, and it is about communicating the entire process of change. So the biggest thing is we're wanting to get people to the point of decision, which I mentioned before. So one of the things is to have one-on-one -on -one conversations. You want to talk to your team members, but you want to talk to every team member, mm -hmm. right? So having conversations and asking seriously, and I think I've already said, this, you know, I may have conveyed this already, but it really is asking, what is it that you're feeling? What are you, do, tell me what the change is that you understand that we're doing. Not just for a read back, but to really get their perspective or their view on yes. what this really is about. What do you imagine this is going to um, impact, right? Um, and allow them to share yeah. and then ask, what ideas do you think would make this easier? Now, by the way, I mentioned we're trying to get people to the point of decision. So we're hoping, you know, for the resistors, because right there in the zone of disruption, we can have people who are saying, I don't like this. I'm not. This is why this is not a good idea. Um, and, and, they're, and I'm not buying in. Right. They just and you could tell by their behavior. They may not say that yes. some people will, but they may not necessarily say that. But so you're just trying to give them enough information to try. Right. Yes. So even if they're resisting, not shunning them, not making them feel bad, um, really acknowledging the humanness in this. Right. And then when they get to the point of decision make, with enough information, it doesn't mean that you're saying this is going to be perfect. You're not going to have any challenges. But if you can give them enough information and every individual, even the res person who feels resistant, can know this is what's changing. This is why it's changing. And this is what it means for me. And my leader cares enough to hear me through and is saying perhaps we can un like always listen to and leverage some of the ideas that are given. I'll try I love it. And, and what I really appreciate about what you're saying is, one, we're asking our team members, we're getting their buy-in, we're creating culture, and we're learning as well. I mean, we're really open-minded to say, what, what do you need and what should we be doing? What We are apt to be learning new things as we go as well. So great advice. But one last question that I have for you, Marche. There, there is a point where people maybe in navigating constant change, they experience heightened stress or we're even seeing maybe some burnout from just the constant change or the challenge of change. What, what advice would you give a leader that's seeing that on their own team? Yeah, so it, I encourage, you know, let people know how much they matter. 
um, encourage your team members to try and communicate with each other and help we foster like how do we support each other like what have you tried that did not work and we can already tell people it doesn't um and this may sound we say for whatever the change responses are really encourage people to be in the moment to just breathe i know that sounds like you you don't want there you go <laughs> just breathe like but it really does require some development of trust with our team members and if we listen to them we talk to them we have one-on-ones um, you let them know that you're not just pushing it on them, but we're in this together. I think that's very helpful. I mean, truly, leaders create culture. So, so what an amazing example of that. Marche, thank you so much for sharing your expertise and your experience with us. It's been a lovely conversation. I know it'll be valuable for our viewers and listeners as well. So thank you. Thank you so much, Lena. For more help leading your team through an upcoming change, download our free guide, How to Communicate Change, a Tool for Leaders. It's linked in the show notes. And please visit franklincovey.com for more resources. Thanks for joining us today.